and we're live again. Okay, so this is two days in a row. Um, I don't know if I'm going to obviously do this every day, but uh, this morning I got to thinking about what am I really doing with this channel and what am I really doing with my life? So in, in this morning drive, I finally gave in and accepted that I am going to have to sell out to social media algorithms. Um, and segregate my content. And here's the reason why, okay? So when I first actually started creating content, actually, this is a little bit of a funny story. Not funny, but I've always wanted to create content ever since I was doing music production. I was in a music production company <clears throat> that me and my uh, childhood friend started called Basement Productions, where we were making uh, hip hop beats for hip hop artists. And right kind of like in like the 2005 to 2007 time frame, um, things really started to change in music. More like this is like kind of the post Napster uh, file sharing world that changed things a lot from how money was being made. But, um, there were more and more programs coming out. I remember reason was out. Uh, reason was like a music production software, um, fruity loops, which really made it a lot simpler to sample and make hip hop music from a sampling perspective, rather than having the NPCs, which were $2,000 at the time you had, this burned free software that you can make the same kind of music with. Uh, so the, everything changed with how, how music production was being made. And another thing that happened at that time, reasons, yeah, reason, reason, reason is dope. Um, so a lot of things that changed at the time where like the barrier to entry for, for hip hop production was for the most part equipment. Right, like a, like the the high end keyboards, easily were two thousand dollars. The sound racks were about a thousand a pop for for quality sounds. We're talking about again Korg, Yamaha, uh, etc. Um, Roland racks. They they were all expensive. So if you wanted to have professional sounding music, you had to spend a lot of money. But at the time, I realized something that more and more people were creating, and I wanted to build a studio in Queens, New York called Basement Productions. Well, we had Basement Productions, the company, but we wanted to build out a studio and uh, we were going to build out the studio to the basement of the building where my nursing agency was. So um, we never did that. You know, I'm not going to go into the, the politics of that business, but we weren't we weren't cohesive in vision for that business. And that's important. That's why I stress vision um, significantly for, for, for business founders. Anyway, um, let me fast forward a bit, but things started to change where there was a need, like there were more people coming to market saying, Hey, I, I want to record. Um, and I found it to be, I thought it was going to be in our best interest to build out a studio and work with artists as we're trying to push our beats to you know the jay-z's and m&m's of the world um which is kind of a long shot i thought it would be a good idea to work with local artists and develop them um not only from uh their recording sessions but recording on our music handling their merch handling their promo material handling uh their videos and this is where i'm getting to with the content creation at the time, the the um, Canon Rebels were kind of, in my opinion, changing things for the industry. You could get 1080p high quality video out of handheld DSLRs, and if you went to the you know 5D Mark IIs, you could don't worry, don't worry about it. You get get uh you dealing with the 5D Mark IIs. Um, you were getting really high quality video. Um, 
and I started already. We had invested in equipment. I was already into music creation. Um, video just made the next logical step. So we started talking to some of the artists that we were working with. We were working with uh, John Doe, who was signed to Timbaland's label. And he was saying how he was going to film um, some videos for his mixtape. And if you remember, for those of you who were following hip hop, this is before World Star. This is before um, Vlad TV. There was like all hip hop and hip hop, uh, hip hop game .com. Um, And they were kind of like the web mixtape sort of underground world. And we started releasing music through hip hop game that we were recording with John Doe and other artists. And since we were working with artists, we had kind of like first, we were working with a group, uh, we were working with the Heat out of New Jersey. They were, they were with Akon's label. Um, we were working with a, f a few different local artists. Uh, and we started developing racing with True Life. There, there, was, there was things that were, that were kind of materializing. But what, what we realized is that all of these artists needed a full production suite. Like I said, music, recording, video. And at that point, I was like, oh, man, I, I really want to get into video because we'll be offering something that no other producers can do. For artists, they had to go to you know, the, the video producers to get their videos made, and the budgets were ridiculous at that time. So now you're getting like this prosumer grade gear. Um, and there weren't many people like me who were uh, kind of thinking about doing it all. Um, but that timing timed perfectly with YouTube becoming a platform um, to host video. Like these are huge files. We're talking about, you know, having a 64 gig hard drive was something substantial in those days. I don't even think they came that large. Right? They might've been like, oh man, who knows what, what the hard drives were in 2007, 64 gigs, maybe like 16. <laughs> might have been might have been something significant. So these video files were huge. And um, naturally, they would have ended up on YouTube and would have given us a really radical um, perspective because we would have been working with artists, filming them, interviewing them, doing their videos. It would have positioned us nicely. But I always had the idea of creating content. Then I started a... Um, a fashion tech company with my ex-wife in 2012, and we started to film. There's a little content out there um, for for that company called Style Scan, and we started to record kind of like fashion tips and fashion recommendations, and kind of we're using that to build awareness about our mobile app called Style Scan, which was to help people discover brands, um, and we're organizing things by barcode and by brand category and color. So that if somebody was shopping with style scan, they could go into H&M, for instance, scan the barcode of, a, of any item and see how other people in the community are stylizing it as well as, excuse me, sorry, burping. Um, <laughs> just ignore me. Uh, how other people were styling it so they could get styling tips. So that evolved into my cooking channel, Hook It Up, and then ENTP Life. Okay. So... As an ENTP, I have a wide range of interest, as you know. My my short story just uh, explained. You know, working in healthcare staffing, having uh, a music production company that I want to do video on, to fashion tech company, to a cooking channel, to whatever the hell this channel is at this point. And um, because of that, ENTP Live became my place to just unload whatever I wanted to create. And what I realized, not what I realized, but what I've noticed over the years that I've been doing this is that I have a few different audiences here in ENTP Life, and they're not necessarily into everything that I'm covering. You see this, um, shout out to Queens. I feel that as an yeah, ENTP is, t is tough. Hey, bud, love the content. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, let me see what else is being said. Just as you know, this video, just so you know, this video isn't working. Uh, whatever that channel is, this video isn't working. Ah, 
I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, so um, either way, uh, do you guys see this video? Cool, man. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I when I put out different content, like, it ranges from aviation to sometimes, you know, I'll throw some food stuff on, on there, like in the shorts. Um, it's just all over the place. Healthcare, staffing, home healthcare, two completely different industries and people get confused there. I do some real estate stuff. I do some Airbnb stuff. I sample businesses here. I talk about stocks. I, it's literally like a ENTP brain diarrhea dumping onto a channel. Um, yeah, so it's it's that sort of stuff. Now, um, the thing that is, uh, I might have to take that call. The thing that is um, difficult is that uh, my information is is too broad, and someone who comes for aviation may not necessarily be interested in coming for uh, healthcare stuff. Um, someone who is it, who is interested in um, checking out, uh, I don't know, uh, starting a home healthcare agency certainly may not be interested in living globally, right? Because their business is probably going to be the United States. And I looked at my top 10 videos and six out of the 10 videos that are the most popular, most viewed have everything to do with living internationally, which is more in line with what I really love. Um, the other videos were like two healthcare videos, one aviation video, one real estate video made out my top 10. Um, and because of that, when I release videos on certain topics, um, they really don't do that well because you know the people who who registered to the channel or subscribe to the channel for aviation don't want to hear anything about healthcare and vice versa. So I've really been just thinking about segregating out those topics, and I want your feedback on what you think about that. So I feel like the aviation stuff. I already have a, another aviation channel called Flight Forward. Um, Flight Forward. You can check that out. I only have one teaser video up there, but I'm gonna start moving. Uh, that sort of content to that channel. And then I'm launching another channel just for healthcare entrepreneurship called Passive Workforce. And all the healthcare stuff is going to kind of start moving there because I feel like that's a clearly defined tranche. Um, and then the global living, you know, the living in Medellin, uh, Italy videos, um, pursuing Airbnbs internationally, that sort of stuff I feel like lives in in the same place and I could keep here on ENTP life since most of the people are here for that. And then I've been thinking about like some of the other business stuff. So the real estate investing, the Airbnb stuff, just the random business hacks, things that, that might make you money. Um, stock trading, uh, buying businesses, investing in businesses, starting a business from scratch. That's not healthcare, just general business advice. Maybe, parsing that out into one other channel, um, which in reality sounds like it may be a lot, but I'm making the content anyway. So, you know, it's not going to be that much of a difference for me. And then I started to think, well, if, if I start to segregate out the content like this, um, where things are more focused, I know I could, I could benefit from that because the people will get more of the content that interested them in the first place. And most people outside of the ENTPs, are interested in just one thing or two things. They don't really have that much breadth when it comes to um, their interest. They're not as varied as us. So um, that's what I'm thinking. And I wanted to know what what you guys think about that. It's I'll still be making the same sort of content, but storing them on different channels so that as people discover that content, they get exclusively that sort of content, and that's it. You know, that's more or less what I'm what I'm thinking. So, just quickly, if you guys can tell me what you guys are thinking about that, 
Um, is there any way I could connect with you as an ENTP? Sure. Uh, there's, you can book consultations with me, like for mentoring sessions or whatever the case may be. Um, there's usually a link down below. So just, just sign up for a consultation. Uh, my bad, it was working. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do you do your P? Yeah, I did my I did my PPL in New York. Um, at uh, I went to two schools. First, I went to Academy of Aviation, um, and then I went to uh, Global Aviation, both at KFRG uh, Farmingdale Airport. Um, I'm gonna do a video on on how that was a disaster and a disaster of my own making and why it cost me about fifty thousand dollars to get my ppl so i think that's that'll make a good video on, on my new channel flight for it but um yeah it, i did my ppl here um i like your playlist awesome i appreciate that i think it would work better yeah marco man um i think it worked better too i just didn't want to I just didn't want to end up what what I was afraid of was one video type doing well and then being pigeonholed to that because I know that's like hell for me. I don't I want to just cover one topic endlessly. But I think what I've done over the past few years is I've tested a bunch of different topics. Um and based on that, I see what people kind of gravitate towards, what they like and what I bring to the table in a specific for a specific group of people. So now I can say, okay, these topics are topics that I have, you know, some interest in. Like for example, aviation. I love flying. Uh, I'm completely revamping my plane right now, which is why you haven't seen any flying deals. I've been down for nine months. Um, but I want to I want to fly and show more of my kind of travels with the aviation, right? So more storytelling than just look at my plane and that's it, no, no. Um, I wanna be able to tell good stories utilizing flight as one of the mediums or one of the ways to tell that story. Um, but I'm not gonna do three videos a week on that channel. I might do one video a month on that channel, just one really good one. Um, or maybe two a month or whatever, you know, one, one that's like the experience and one that is like, okay, here's what you need to know about aviation from a learning perspective. But if I had to just do an aviation channel, I would feel trapped that I couldn't talk about anything else that I liked. So I think the better thing for me to do is have multiple channels where I could talk about the things that I like across those. Like I miss my cooking channel, right? I hated only doing cooking on that channel. But I miss it. I was looking at it today and I was like, man, you know, I, I've got a few new recipes that I would like to put out there and I, I'm able to create better. So I would love to, I would love to, to, um, okay. So, um, I'm getting an Airbnb text, but um I'll, I'll address that shortly yeah so anyway so i miss the cooking stuff lately i've been really trying to perfect my grilling of steaks outdoors on fire and i'm probably going to move to charcoal and that's just something that, I, that i'm interested in i'm about to grow some mushrooms at home not like uh, psychedelics but <laughs> oyster mushrooms and shiitakes and some of the exotic mushrooms growing them at home um, for more recipes. And I would love to be able to show that. Uh, but again, if a video like that does really well, it almost kind of leans me to try to talk about that. Like, I'll give you an example. So I have an ENTP Live TikTok account. Throwing out kind of, you know, I'm not a real TikTok consumer, but hey, visibility doesn't hurt. So I'm throwing content out there. And one of the pieces of content that got posted was a, was a, um, a short clip speaking about is Colombia safe? And for people who don't know, there is a sex tourism culture 
in Colombia, just like there is in other places in the world, like Amsterdam, for instance, has like their red light district that's known. So um, there, there's that. And there's, you know, the dark side to that. So I spoke about this um, in this overall safety video in Medellin and dating safely and how to navigate that if you're into that. Never did I think that this, I didn't even, first of all, I didn't even know that, that my social media team was going to post that snippet. They just were, they were actually, they cut up that video into a few different parts and a couple of other Columbia videos and just was posting on Medellin on TikTok. And that was my first TikTok that did really well. It's like at almost 300,000 views. So what does that do to the creator? What that does is validate a certain behavior. And that's what's that's kind of toxic about social media is that if the algorithm anoints your content and pushes it, and now you get likes, visibilities, comments, bunch of engagement, what happens is it gets you high, right? Because that validation, that's why likes are part of the social media scheme. That validation releases dopamine. And dopamine, as you know, is, is our is our pleasure uh 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 our pleasure like i'm drawing a blank uh neurotransmitter um released you know during sex during eating foods obviously during drug use at times uh, depending on what drug you're using um but dopamine is quite uh is a reinforcing neurotransmitter so if you have this moment where you did a video and the public validates you in a major way, it almost makes you want to talk more about that or do more of that. That's why you got girls shaking their butts on, on TikTok and whatever the case may be, because they're getting all the likes, all the attention that they maybe never got from not doing that. And all of a sudden, hey, you know, this is the direction that their life goes in because of that validation. Social media does that. And um, it might get you to start producing content that may not be true to who you are because you, you're you you're getting praise for creating that sort of content. You see that happen with, you know, with a lot of the, the big YouTubers that they might go on a, a certain rant that's controversial all of a sudden that gets picked up and now that becomes their brand to be this character. Um, and that's not, I never, I never want to sell out in that way. So it makes more sense for me to say, okay, if there's an audience for something then, and that's what they're looking for and it aligns with me, then I could do more content for that particular audience, but not exclusively is that become my identity. Cause I'm not, uh, I'm a multifaceted person. I'm not just a pilot. I'm not just a real estate investor. I'm not just a healthcare uh, business operator. I'm all these things. Um, and I would like to speak on all those things. So I think it just makes sense to separate it out and not, and not get pigeonholed into one particular brand and be able to have multiple brands and multiple sides to who I am just on display in different areas. So I don't get, if I get tired of one, I can take a break and I could be making more content that I like somewhere else. Marco and his wife are content creators as well. Um, they've been they've been documenting their their journey around the world. Um, they're what I would consider global citizens. I did a podcast with them. I haven't released it yet, but that's something that's coming to this channel specifically is talking more about global living. Um, doing podcasts with people who've who've decided to take that jump and say, "F it, I'm gonna." see the world and live in the world rather than stay in my job. So you want to check them out. Um, I'm going to butcher this and I apologize in advance because I know where to find them. Um, but I believe it's voyage or voyages of the Santa Maria's because his last name is Santa Maria. It's a word play on, I guess, uh, the voyage of the, uh, one of the uh, boats of Christopher Columbus multiple meanings there but check them out um they do good work 
uh get through this okay i see is what you suggest for an entp who hasn't niched down in content creation to pursue it all um yeah i, I would say pursue it all uh and you know, on different avenues because you're going to be able to to kind of branch out there's a another entp i did something with called melissa talks and she was talking about typology a lot and she got tired of it and she started doing interviews <laughs> Right, she was like, I need to talk to other ENTPs, other personality types, exchanging ideas. I can't just talk to the camera alone anymore. And she had to try something new. And she's probably going to get tired of that and think, man, what? How else can I uh, change things? Thank you, Kenneth. Appreciate it. Uh, in different avenues, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you? I mean, I, I think. Ultimately, I think an ENTP should always do what they want to do. Um, and at the same time, I, one of the most challenging things for us is that we, when we change direction because it's like, all right, I'm frustrated or tired with this thing, we often can change direction and abandon something that was really good. Um, meaning we can up and close a business or stop pursuing a certain activity that's making us money to produce something that doesn't make us any money at all uh, just because we're not interested in the thing that makes us money anymore, right? And this money is not enough of a motivator to keep us interested. So, but it's, it's obviously stupid to throw away a business that's making you money, right? So what I advise the NTPs is that as they're, as they spent time and energy building things, don't let them just fall into disrepair sell them or or find somebody to help you manage them while your interest uh, shifts. Uh, Marco, the more niche content to each channel slash platform will probably drive the engagement better and will keep the followers more loyal. Of course, you know, that that's just how it works. But I, I, I knew that I, if I, if I niche down, I'm going to feel empty by not covering other things that I'm interested in. So I have to have multiple channels to get my thoughts out. Lord Powell, I discovered your channel when I was doing research on bias while playing, but then I went down the rabbit hole and now I'm hooked to your content. Awesome. Uh, I think the risk is the splitting, I think the risk in splitting that content is the content might get too thin. If if some channel only has a few videos, might not be worth a whole channel. That's a possibility, um, but there there's some channels that that don't put out content, a lot of content, but what they put out is dope um, when they put it out. So, I uh, I think if like. And and one one telltale sign of that is you had a channel, you put out a video, that video does really well. People subscribe. They don't see your video for a while. They don't you don't create anything for a while. A month later, when they've potentially forgotten you, you put out a new video. And of course, YouTube is gonna push that video first to people who were engaged by your content. And they push it more when you when you've been inactive for a while to kind of help promote you and get you more interested. Boom, that gets pushed out to everybody. If the first video was really good and the second video was really good and out of your 10,000 subscribers that came from video number one, 8,000 of them watched video number two, that is really good, right? It shows that the content is desired by this population in mass. If I did an aviation video that does really well, I get a bunch of subscribers from that. And then the next four videos I put out are global living, healthcare staffing, uh, real estate, Airbnb. And they're getting alerts to these things that they don't are not even interested in. That hurts how YouTube distributes my content because it's like, oh, this is just not interesting. It doesn't know what the subject matter is. It just knows the thumbnails are getting clicked when it's presented. And people who watched before are not watching this. Not good. Bad topic. Buried. So 
Um, I don't think thin is bad, just to, to re rebut that. I think thin is bad if the material is flaky. If the material's quality, um, not just visually, but what people get up from it, they feel something, they learn something significant. It's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. Do you have any courses on how to start and grow a business in Colombia? I'd love the insights and wouldn't mind paying for it. I've been thinking about it. Um, I'm actually, I, I was talking to my executive assistant yesterday about uh, formalizing the process of going from uh, the United States to Colombia to get the visa and to um, start the business, the whole, the whole thing, just so we could consult on that. Um, so probably coming soon, you know, depends if, if I get more, like the way that I create courses or do deeper dives on topics is that I first will test out the topic that's presented. And if people like the topic and are asking questions, when I see what their, uh, what their needs are and what their pain points are, if I see that it's consistent, then I will create something. So that's exactly how the healthcare staffing thing started. I did some videos on healthcare staffing. People ask me, how do you start? 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 What do you do? Can you help me? And I was proof enough that that's where I should go. So there's almost like I, like it's, I have to test it first. But if sure, if, if more people like you are interested in that, um, yeah, I, I will, something like that will come out. Whether, whether it's a course or a service, just a direct will assist you and get it done. Um, I don't know yet, but I've, I've gotten asked that question a few times between people looking to relocate to Brazil and people relocating to Colombia. And I see that anybody who's interested in moving internationally, that's one of their top thoughts. Like, how do I start a business there? How do I get settled there? How do I? And uh, I, think, I think there is um, opportunity there for me to monetize that and to help people at the same time. Okay, the crossover has benefits too. I got interested in global living, but don't like flying, but I might watch because of your personality and story. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I think there's ways for me to, to kind of tease some of the other things. Like I can do a video about uh, living in the Bahamas, but fly my plane to the Bahamas and some of the other islands, right? Where I could kind of show those different interests, talk about it for like a minute or so, and then kind of focus on the main subject matter, which is global living. Um, and then it pays off for people. And when people have questions about aviation, you could say, oh, you know, I have another channel on that. And they could do their deep diving there. So that's how, kind of how I'm thinking about handling it. You are a Renaissance man at first blush i am afraid i might miss something really good like racism in italy which appeared in international real estate by the way i dig looking at you see it's i think it depends right i think uh i if my channel attracts entps it's which it does um we need that varied stimulus so i think for that audience it's helpful but i know how, i think i know how to how to feed that uh, curiosity while being still focused to a core audience. You disagree? You think splitting is the right way to go? I found your channel as an ENTP looking for a mentor who's actually a serial entrepreneur and taking notes on the day and seeing the calendar, getting a good understanding of a good way to operate. Okay, cool. Uh, splitting is fine as long as content flows. You can do two videos a week on a certain... Okay. Yeah. Edgar, what's going on, baby? He... <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I. the way I could... I'll tell you how I handle that. Um, I, if I was working on this channel alone... It would be a disaster um, because I wouldn't get things edited on time. Um, I wouldn't do anything on time. It's, 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 it's a trouble point for me. Um, but I work with a really good team that they are organized. 
um, and they can keep me on track. And what I'll do, I'll vi- I'll record like eight videos in a weekend. Like this weekend, I did, I think I did ten videos to carry me for the next ten weeks. Um, and then I did maybe like twenty five TikToks. I'll just crush work, and then that's it. And then the rest of the team can deal with the thumbnail planning, the cleaning up of the video, editing, release schedule, etc. cetera. Um, if it was me having to record, review, edit, write up my content. I write up my content, like what I'm going to say that the creative is on me. But if I had to do that alone, respond, respond to people who are booking meetings. I can't even stick. I can't even appropriately put a meeting on my own schedule. Sometimes I put it at the wrong time, I put it in the wrong slot. Uh, I forget. Yeah. Listen, I the just because I may present as orderly, um, my life is very much like most ANTPs. The only difference is that since I've built the ability to pay for help and support, I'm able to be the best version of myself. I can't focus on cleaning. I can't focus on order. I'm grossly inconsistent in certain things. So, and I know that I need that help. And since I'm able to afford that help, I pay for the help. And it helps me perform at my best. And I know what my strengths are. My strengths are problem solving, thinking, being creative, and taking chances. Um, order and timeliness, leave that up to somebody else. Next, uh, can you please explain if you will then create individual Instagrams as Facebook says, as well for each of those tranches? I don't know. Um, you know, I would probably say yes, I will eventually do that. Um, but I would probably have the most intimate relationship with ENCP life as far as like uh, having direct touch and feel with the audience. Um, because the more channels, the more views, the more interactions, it becomes a lot. And I don't necessarily, like, I, I don't want to be going through four or five Instagram accounts to see what the message is. Nah, man, I'm not doing that. So I think it, it's going to be worth it to present the content in those other places. Like, the visibility is important. But the management certainly won't be me. I could promise you that. I'm no expert, but I think different series within different series can work. But let me let me tell you what happens. Like I said, the algorithm is kind of blind. It's it's processing information in its most rational way. It's a, obviously a logical pattern, but the YouTube algorithm is concerned with click through rate, watch time, and engagement and follow through those those that's like the hallmark of what makes a good youtube video to the algorithm the click through lets people lets the algorithm know when people see this video when this video is presented for whatever reason it's interesting people will want to watch it the watch time is important to them for two reasons because watch time is the indicator that this is interesting content. People are not skipping. They're glued to the content and they're consuming. Watch time is also important because if the video is long enough and it's that engaging, um, what ends up happening is they could stuff another ad in the middle and make money off of you watching. Engagement, comments, likes, sharing particularly lets the algorithm again know, wow, this is really interesting. It's moved people enough for them to say something in response and reaction to the video. It's moved them enough to like or dislike. 
it's moved them enough to take it further and share it with somebody else because other people need to see this. Okay. I think sharing is probably one of the best indicators of this is awesome because it not only does it show that people are interested in other people seeing it, but it shows, uh, it pulls people into an ex into a experience with YouTube. Again, potential to share, sow an ad, get somebody engaged, get somebody to create an account, those sort of things. So sharing is important. And finally, if people go on to watch more about your content or someone else's content, you've allow them to repeat that process again, showing ads, keeping people engaged and on their platform. So the reason why having multiple series within one channel that are different topics can be dangerous is that if somebody clicked on my thumbnail because it was a cheap airplane and they're interested in aviation and the next video that I display is pasta in Sicily, right? Let me get that focus back on. Hello. There we go. Yeah. So it's pasta in Sicily and it's just food. And this person is, I don't know, uh, or a steak and they're a vegan, a vegan pilot. They're not going to watch that video because it has nothing to do with aviation and they definitely aren't interested in meat. The algorithm says this juicy, delicious looking steak. I don't know what this picture is, but for whatever reason, the people who watched the last video and the subscribers are not clicking this thing. Why? We don't know. Show it less because we want to only show people what they're actually interested in. And that's the problem with the varied topics. Even though you put it in its own playlist, in its own lane, when it's presented for the first 24 hours, because in that first 24 hours post-release, the algorithm is testing, how does your video do amongst your audience? How does it do amongst strangers who've never interacted with your, with your content? Because if it does well with you and your audience, they'll show it to more of your audience, and then they'll start to test it to strangers. Now, if they present the same thumbnail, the same video to strangers, does it make them click? Right? Does it have keywords that this stranger might be have just demonstrated interest in before? If yes, they'll show it to them. And do they click? What because what they see is interesting to them. If they do click, they push it even further. Do we show this to viewers who aren't interested in any of these topics? And do they click? Because now you just pique their interest. Like what? I've never, I've never seen anything on aviation in my life. But a $35,000 plane is interesting. I need to see what the hell is going on here. They'll show it to someone who's completely outside of the ecosystem of cheap planes, planes in general, aviation, because it's getting clicks. And if you can understand that, then regardless of what your topic is, you'll get views and you'll get the algorithm to juice you and push you. So you have to understand how it works. And I... And I understand it. And I, I just have to kind of give in to maximize on it. Do you have any courses on starting and growing a business in Colombia? What? Did you just come on here with another username? <laughs> All right. If, if you're the same person, great. If you're not, great. But I don't have anything yet. But I'm thinking about it. I'm going through a similar path with my varied interest. I have a residential real estate construction slash flipping company, Asana slash cold plunge experience company. Cool. And what's what's wrong with that? He'll reach more than enough audience in different places it'd be worth doing. Okay. I'm interested in building a marketing agency out there, but would love some insight and wouldn't mind paying for it. Well, you could book a consultation. We could talk through it, but I don't have a um, a structured course. Jesus, there's a lot of comments here. Facts, bro. Okay, I'm gonna just look for a question, and then I'm I'm gonna get out of here. Voyage, voyage of the Santa Marias. Okay, that's what Marco's channel is. Caroline, uh, is it cool to have multiple businesses if one doesn't do well this month and the other is there to back you up? Um. 
yes and no. Uh, having that diversification of businesses can kind of hedge against seasonality, let's just say. Um, but it's also going to split your focus, right? That's a big problem for me in my businesses is that my focus is split. So I can't, I can't do any one of my businesses, nothing in any of my businesses to the level that I'm capable of because I'm doing two hours here, two hours there, one hour here, right? If I were to just drill down and do 12 hours a day, seven days a week, which I work about that much in just one area, you know, it's like, it's like bench pressing all day. If you bench press all day, you're going to have some huge pecs, but the rest of you might look like a worm. But if you're looking to get the nicest pecs in the world, then you might have the nicest pecs in the world. If you are well-rounded and you're just looking for overall physique, yeah, that might help just being well-rounded, having a couple of different businesses. It really depends on what you want to do. Um, businesses tend to work best with a lot, with hyper-focus. Um, rather than varied focus, you you may get good results. Like you might do, you know, a million dollars there, three hundred thousand in another business, twelve million in another, a hundred thousand in another, and if you focus on any one of those businesses, they might have been a fifty million dollar business if you just focus on one, rather than having a varied portfolio of fifty fifty million in revenue. For it, for example, I hope that answered that question. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Would love to hear your thoughts on opportunities in Brazil. Um, which cities are you liking for real estate investment? It's kind of hard to say in Brazil, just because there's just varied wealth. Like, you know, you could go, you could go from Leblanc, where it's got the most expensive real estate in South America, to um, I don't know, uh, Aya do Cabo, and. Or, or up the street to a favela from Leblanc. It, 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 Brazil is kind of strange in that way. I, 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 I can't say I am proficient in, in investing in Brazil. I bought land there. I'm building a house there. Um, I like it there. But from an investment standpoint, I would need to, to be more informed to be able to give advice. Uh, what type of work did you do before all this? And when was your turning point when you made the decision to quit what you were doing? I haven't quit. Uh, I've quit a lot of things, but um, I've done I've done a lot. Um, right now, my my predominant money makers are healthcare and uh, well, home healthcare and and real estate investing. And now number three is kind of consulting. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Number three is consulting. And number four would probably be stock trading and investing. Uh, yeah. So I it's not that I stopped doing anything. Um, I stopped working as an x-ray technologist, like my profession that I trained for in college. In like 2012 or 13, somewhere around that era, um, just because I, through my businesses, I was doing well enough to feel comfortable not having a job. And one doctor kind of said something to me that made me realize, like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I was talking to him about real estate investments and whatever, and, and I'm actually in between scans with him, and he's a radiologist. And he was like, "If you got all these businesses and all, you know, you're making this money here and there, what? Why are you doing this?" And I was and I was contracting myself through my agency, and I it made me feel as if he was trying to say I was BSing about what else I had going on because he didn't understand why would I be working as X ray tech if I have you know a multi million dollar home care agency and a staffing agency and I have this real estate business that's growing and. And we would talk about investment opportunities, so it wasn't like I was you know, just talking nonsense. Uh, but it made me feel some kind of way, and I was like, you know what, this guy's right, man. I think I'm done, and, 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 and that was and that was that. But for me, it's always been about financial security. Um, so if I feel secure that I'm able to provide for my well-being, 
for my life, for my family, um, and get the things that I want out of life, then I'm willing to change and redirect at any time. I, I want, I need to always guarantee that so I can feel at peace in whatever else that I'm doing, especially if it's something that's losing money. Like think about, you know, my, my revenue on YouTube is only a thousand dollars a month. So think about what that would be like, right? Like I, I can't survive. If I just was a, a YouTube creator and that's it, I couldn't survive on a thousand dollars a month. Like not, not, not with my family. Even if I was in Colombia full time, a thousand dollars a month, like families do it, but I wouldn't have the lifestyle that I want on a thousand dollars a month. And I would be responsible for doing my own editing, doing everything. Like I'd have no budget for that. Um, so I think, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna pivot away from something that you don't like to do, that's making you money, then you better figure out how to make your money tree either by investing in something that is going to make you money, regardless of if, if it has your attention or not, or do things that you really enjoy that are going to make you equal money or more money. Is there a way to stay in Colombia longer than six months without without a work or student visa? Or you could get an investor's visa. You're going to need a visa more than six months, or you can stay illegally. Right? There's always that option. I'm an engineer in New York City, and I'm ready to pack it up and head to Germany and pursue my passion. What's slowing you down? Hi, I'm from Texas. I opened a home health care agency and got Medicaid certified. Awesome. I am now thinking of selling. <laughs> uh, but watching you continues to motivate me to keep going on. I'm thinking about selling, too. Um, why Why are you thinking about selling, Angelica? Uh Are you, how's the volume? Are you kind of like turned off? Are you, like, I, I understand why you might be turned off. Um, believe me, I hate home health care. I, I strongly dislike home health care. I probably, I think I hate it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sweeten that up. I think I hate home health care. Um, not, not caring for the patients. That part, I don't mind so much. I hate the bureaucracy of it. I hate the regulations. I hate that. You know, you're constantly at the at the mercy of reimbursement rate changes and wage changes and all the paperwork and all the BS. It feels like everybody got their hand in your pocket. It's awful, man. Okay. Oh, so wow, as an ENTP, you really need to take notes on team building. Yeah, for sure. You need to take notes on team building. You need to be self-aware. Uh, and you, you need to kind of build out your flaws, right? Because we're good at that. Like we're gonna, we could look at a system and say where the problems are. You have to apply that lens on yourself and say, I'm disorganized. I lack focus. Um, I can be verbally abrasive. Uh, I argue with people too much, you know, whatever. I spend too much time consuming content, all those things. And you could say, all right, well, let me design what I need to protect me from my own pitfall. A, a, a really good good ENTP to follow is Ray Dalio. Classic ENTP, man. You watch his story and you'll say, oh yeah, this dude is an ENTP to the point that he built an algorithm to run his business, not run, not run his trading operation, but to run the operations and how, and how the staff interact with each other because he couldn't trust his own opinion. And he wanted to make sure that he accurately weighted the opinions of others relative to their experience <laughs> and their intellect. <laughs> like, so it, you, you got it. Check out Ray Dalio, Eddie. Really interesting character. Um, just to clarify, would each of your interests have its own brand, YouTube channel, Instagram, et cetera? I think so. Um, like, for example, the healthcare staffing and home healthcare thing is called Passive Workforce. And its brand is to help operators build a business where they can generate passive income off of this functional workforce, people who are working in hospitals, people who are working with patients, build it large enough so that you can earn money regardless if you're running that business. So that's branded in its own way. Uh, Jesus Christ. All right, well, I'm at the bottom here and we'll leave with these last two, Alex and Angelica, and I'm out.
because I didn't expect this to be an hour rant. Um, okay, so just going, just joining the live and not sure of the subject. It's, well, no one ever knows on the NCP Life what the subject is, so don't worry about that. But I want to share that I was drawn to your videos and subscribed because of your positive attitude. Your genuine nature is so apparent. All the best. Thank you very much, Alexi. I appreciate that feedback, and I'll continue to be so. Um, the video was just talking about my varied interest and how I'm going to have to segregate the content from ENTP Life onto other channels. So um, the core of ENTP Life will be me just being myself, but global living and how to afford global living will be kind of the crux of ENTP Life. The aviation stuff will go onto my aviation channel, Flight Forward. Um, the healthcare staffing stuff will go to um, a new channel and actually a completely new business for me called Passive Workforce. Uh, and we're segregating things out in that way. And then whenever there's like a clear tranche that needs to become its own thing, I'll kind of segregate that out so that people who are hyper interested in that topic will get that topic. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, okay, Angelica. Yes, the stress, and there are about a million agencies in my area, exaggerating, of course. Um, I love caring for the patients, though. Yeah, the, the, the competition, you know, is there. Um, I think, I think the, the demographic is there to capture more and more of that market. I think the, the thing that sucks the most with skilled home health care is the rapid turnover of clients. Um, and this is why I'm getting out of, out of skilled for sure. I, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that I have to constantly be on to get clients for such a short period of time, you know, 30 day admissions, 60 day admissions. I like my long term care where I might have a client for eight years, the same effort to land that client for eight years is what it takes me to get a doctor to refer uh, a 30 day admission. I want the long term money. All righty, guys, uh, be well, I got to get out of here, get my work done. Um, I actually didn't plan on putting out any content today, but I had this idea that I wanted to to run by the audience and make sure that I wasn't going in the wrong direction and to get your feedback and let you know what's going on. Um, I'll still be putting out content here, but expect it to be mostly focused on global living, um, kind of seeing the world through my eyes. I will talk about Airbnb. I will talk about those things, um, but it won't be like episodes dedicated to that. It'll be kind of included just to give snippets and overviews of those things. All righty. Take well, take well. Take care, be well, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Thank you.